Good morning, sixth grade. Uh, let me move my bubble. So we are reviewing today for your test that will be due on Thursday. So there's also a Kahoot if you haven't already done it to work through for review. Otherwise, let's go ahead. So let's start with vocabulary, vocabulary like normal. We have valence electrons, those electrons of an atom that have the highest energy and are involved in chemical bonding. We have electron dot diagrams, which includes the symbol for the element surrounded by dots, indicating how many valence electrons they have. A chemical bond is the force of attraction that holds atoms together as a result of the, of the rearrangement of electrons between them. An ion is an atom or group of atoms that has an electric charge. Polyatomic ions are ions that are made of more than one atom. An ionic bond is the attraction between two oppositely charged ions. An ionic compound is the resulting compound of an ionic bond made up of both. An ion. Can we just talk about this? Oh, would you look at that? I made it on there twice. Sorry. So the ionic compound, we'll go back to, is the resulting compound of an ionic bond made up of both positive and negative ions. Sorry about that. A covalent bond is the chemical bond formed when two atoms share electrons. A molecule, a neutral group of atoms joined by covalent bonds. A double bond is when atoms share two pairs of electrons. A triple bond is when they share three pairs of electrons. A molecular compound is a compound that is made up of molecules. A nonpolar bond is a covalent bond in which electrons are shared equally. And on the opposite side, a polar bond is a covalent bond in which electrons are not shared equally. A metallic bond is an attraction between a positive metal ion and the electrons surrounding it. An alloy is a mixture made of two or more elements, at least one of which is a metal. So the things to know from lesson one, we had our two um, answers to the key questions. So at the center of the atom is a, dent, a tiny dense nucleus containing protons and neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus is a cloud-like region of moving electrons. And the number of, the second one, the number of valence electrons in each atom helps determine the chemical properties of that element. We talked about the periodic table of the elements. There were four parts it's broken up into, metals, non-metals, metalloids, and noble gases. So every element fits into one of those four categories. We talked about particle charges. Protons have a charge of plus one. Electrons have a charge of negative one. Neutrons are zero, and an atom is neutral. From lesson two, our three key question answers. When a neutral atom loses a valence electron, it loses a negative charge it becomes a positive ion. When a neutral atom gains an electron, it gains a negative charge and becomes a negative ion. To write the formula for an ionic compound, write the symbol of the positive ion and then the symbol of the negative ion. Add the subscripts that are needed to balance the charges. For an ionic compound, the name of the positive ion comes first, followed by the name of the negative ion. So, our other quick things here, metal atoms are likely to lose electrons, whereas non-metal atoms are likely to gain electrons. If no subscript is written, it is an understood one, and that's in its chemical formula. Lesson three, we had three key questions again, our answers. The attractions between the shared electrons and the protons in the nucleus of each atom hold the atoms together in a covalent bond. Unlike ionic compounds, molecular compounds usually do not conduct electric current when melted or dissolved in water. Also, compared to ionic compounds, molecular compounds generally have lower melting points and boiling points. An unequal sharing of electrons causes covalently bonded atoms to have slight electric charges. Covalent bonds usually form between nonmetal atoms. The two properties of molecular compounds poor electrical conductivity, and low melting and boiling points. 
not every molecule that has polar bonds is polar. If the attractions cancel out, the molecule is nonpolar. And then lesson four. So we had two key questions here. A metal crystal is composed of closely packed, positively charged metal ions. The valence electrons drift among the ions. Properties of metals include a shiny luster and high levels of malleability, ductility, electrical conductivity, and thermal conductivity. So remember five properties of metals. Luster is shiny. Malleability means it, has, it can be molded into complex shapes or sheets. Ductility is its ability to bend. Thermal conductivity means it creates heat. And electrical conductivity means it produces currents. Very few metals used regularly are made up of just one atom. Most are made up of alloys. And that is it. So go ahead and go back if there's something you're really stuck on ask or check it out in the PowerPoint or other lessons. And then when you're ready, go ahead and take the test.